Hey guys, so I'm sure most of us have experienced the problem with our Final Cut Pro libraries growing much larger in file size than our source files. In this video, what we're gonna do is look at what Final Cut Pro does when it creates a library, what happens with our files, and how we can change our settings to ensure a much more tolerable library file size. Now, we did create a video explaining why our projects were getting so large in a video shared two years ago, but we've since learned quite a bit more and wanted to share a more comprehensive understanding. So let's create a project. For our purposes, we'll be using a 1080 30p timeline. And with this project, I am only gonna be using, uh, well, rather, I'm just gonna import one video file. It's this mixed kit clip of a bear and his friend Crow here. You can see him in the corner. We'll be getting quite familiar with them. So the clip is a 1920 by 1080 30p mp4 file and it's only 8.4 megabytes large. We'll import it into our library and bring it into our timeline. So let's check on our library and right now it's around the same size as our source clip. But that all changes once I edit the clip in any way. So let's just say that we change something like the scale by enlarging it. Straight away you'll see the dots appear and over time they will disappear in the timeline, which means that Final Cut is rendering this clip to ProRes in the background. So let's go check on the file size. And this time it's just short of 300 megabytes, all for just the 10 megabyte source clip. You can start to imagine why with just a few clips your libraries can already reach a few gigabytes in file size. So we're gonna go inside the project files and you can see that the main bloat is coming from this folder. In that folder, Final Cut has made a duplicate of our source file, and then over here, it's storing the background ProRes, which is quite unreasonably larger than our source file. Why does Final Cut Pro do this? It's actually trying to do this to speed up the editing process. This is because Final Cut Pro is optimized for editing when your footage is in ProRes. So given the chance, it's going to transcode your clips in order to give you a smoother editing experience. Compressed clips, like the ones we import from most phones and cameras, would have to be constantly processed, which can slow down your editing experience. So the main problem with this is that it comes with a severe cost. You'll notice that the more editing you do, the more these dots here will appear, and then the larger your library is going to become. So as much as possible, I tell Final Cut Pro not to transcode my media. In preferences, go to playback and turn background render off. This will stop Final Cut Pro from re-rendering every time you make an edit. But by now, my project is already quite large. And remember, we also only used one source clip, which was under nine megabytes. So I'm gonna need to delete these background render clips. So I'll first make sure that my library is selected, then go File, Delete Generated Library Files. And we haven't created proxies, but we will select everything. And now if I go back to the file and check on it, you'll see that it's about the same size as our source clips. Also once back in Final Cut Pro, you can see that I'm actually able to edit pretty smoothly, even adding effects and getting decent playback. This, of course, will depend on your system and the size of your project, and I guess also the compression of the particular videos that you're using, but often Final Cut Pro doesn't need ProRes, and transcoding does more harm in file size than good in performance. If you do find that your project is sluggish without background rendering, then it may well be worth using proxies to speed up the workflow, and I'll be releasing another video on that shortly. But there is also another way we can save a bit of space. You'll recall earlier on in this video that Final Cut Pro made a duplicate of our file. Does this mean every time we import a video into a library, Final Cut Pro is gonna create duplicates? Well, we can fix that as well by going back into Preferences and into Import and set files to leave files in place. Now, when we create a new project, and I'm gonna bring in our bear clip again into the timeline, and I'll make any amount of changes. And what you'll see over here with my library is that it doesn't bloat at all. So now you'll notice that when editing, these dots will still appear, but this time they won't gradually disappear, as we have blocked Final Cut Pro from rendering these clips into ProRes in the background. 
Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. We'll be sharing that video on using proxy media and understanding the different types of ProRes formats very soon. Take care.